nothing else. I just want. Come on, everybody, sing that out of mouth. Come on. Let's lift our voices and say nothing else. Come on. Nothing else will do. You know what's amazing about saying that? The Bible says that he watches over his word to see that it's performed. And every time you declare God to be something that he's already said he is, he said that I am, right? I am that I am. So when you begin to declare what he said he is, he obligate, he's obligated at that time to show up as what you called him. And so when we sing nothing else will do, then all we need he begins to fulfill because we have a revelation of who he is in our life. So let's just sing that one more time. Come on. Nothing else. Come on. Nothing else will do. Not money. Not a car. Nothing else. Nothing else. we just declare that nothing else will do. In fact, we've tried everything else and it never worked. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy that was patient with us because we were like the, the woman with the issue of blood. We tried everything before we turned to you. But a lot thank you, Lord, that we stand before you and say, if we can but touch the hem of your garment, because nothing else will do. And so we honor you today and ask you to have your way in this house. Father, let me go ahead and pray over this word and ask that you would just open the hearts of people to receive the word that you would speak over them that they will walk out of here with a new perspective that everything they go through, you are a God that's in the midst of it. And we love you for all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, slap somebody a high five or something and tell them God is good. Let, let's do the old, the old Baptist thing. Oh, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. 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 We are excited today. Um, I just got off the phone just a little while ago with your pastor, Pastor Juan Martinez, all the way from Anchorage, Alaska, and he's giving us just reports of, of just incredible things going on. They had over 40 people do out uh, do a night out with Jesus uh, on both Friday and Saturday night. They went into the midst of the mall, and 40 people were praying in the midst of the mall, and, and people were being set free and delivered in the midst of the mall. Amen? How many, how many of y'all know that's a blessing? Amen? Everybody, he, he told me about how he, everybody that participated, they had never done anything like that. And... Um, and he put out there, you know, we, I think a couple of weeks ago, uh, Pastor Brad talked about a movement that is happening at Get Rap. We're not just a church, but we're a movement that's happening here at Get Rap. And, and, and Pastor Warren said to me this morning, he said, what would happen if we got so on fire as Get Rap Church that what we do on a regular basis became the norm all over the country? Do you, can you imagine what would happen if, if, if every church was doing a night out with Jesus? If every church was going out and, and blessing people, if every church was going out 
and loving on people who didn't think they were lo lovable. And so we just applaud what God is doing. <laughs> Amen. And I want to applaud you as well. I want to applaud you as well because without you, we could not uh, do what we're doing. We have an absolutely incredible pastor and past pastors and Pastor Juan and Pastor Ruthie, and we just honor them and the team that is there in Alaska doing what God has called them to do. Amen? Amen. So turn to your neighbor and say, keep them in prayer. Keep them, in prayer. Uh, keep them lifted. Hey, we're ready. Are y'all ready for the word today? I am excited. I was running late because I was listening to, you know, the last, you know, God always kind of gives you those last minute nuggets that he wants to give out today. Uh, we started last week, we started a, a little mini series. That was last week was the beginning and today is the end of it. But a little mini series um, on embracing the burn, embracing the burn. And one of the things that we were, we were talking about is how we deal with adversity when it comes, how we deal with adversity when it comes. I want to start in Ephesians today, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 20. Amen. We're going to be reading out of the ESV version. And so if your version reads a little differently, don't worry about it. It reads this way. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to, to the riches of his glory, not to the according to the riches of my glory or what I have, he may grant you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded, say rooted, rooted. and grounded yeah. in what? Love. In love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints, say with all the saints, with all the saints. what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, say now, now. to him who is able to, to, to do far but more abundantly than all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Keep going for me. Keep going to verse 21. Do you have that one? I'm sorry, I know I only got two. You don't? Okay. Now to him who is able to keep, do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works within us, it says be majesty, dominion, and power forever and ever. Amen. And so we want to give God glory for the ability to do exceeding abundantly above. What is he going to do exceeding abundantly above? What he did yesterday. Tell your neighbor, it's not what he did yesterday. It doesn't even compare to what he's going to do to your life today. Huh? Is anybody that's a testimony for you, you're you excited about that what God did in your life yesterday, he can exceed it. He's a, a able God to exceed what he did in your life yesterday. Last week we started out, listen to this, we started out by teaching and discussing the sovereignty of God. The word sovereignty means supreme or highest level of power and authority. It is, means full rulership without equal, complete, final, last power to execute his judgment. I'm going to read that again. It is the supreme power and authority, full rulership, without equal, complete, final, last power to execute his, his judgment. When we think about sovereignty in the context of the things that we go through, we have to keep in mind that God is the supreme power. I don't care what you find yourself in, we always, as Christians and believers, have to look at what we go through through the eyes of the supreme God that holds us in his hand. Okay. Okay. Y'all going to get excited in just a minute. It does not matter whether it's pleasant or painful. It does not matter whether it's comfortable or not. God is always and still and forever will be in control. God did not, the, anything the devil does does not catch God by, by surprise. It caught you by surprise, but it didn't catch him by surprise. 
And so we have to always know that God is not a reactionary God. He doesn't react to the things that the devil does. In fact, the things that the devil does, he doesn't even know, he doesn't even know that God literally is his is is that puppeteer that's making him do the things that he's going he's doing. Why? Because he's going to bring about his purpose and plan in the earth. I said this last week, the devil is not an opponent of God. So stop stop spitting out that theology. He is not an opponent of God. In order to be an opponent of God, you have to have at least the, the minute ability to whoop him in any way. The very fact of who God is, the strength of God, the power of God, the weight of God, the, the, the abode of God is so great that the weight, the sheer weight of who he is crushes the enemy. When God got ready to kick the devil out of heaven, he didn't even do it himself. He said, go, go, get, go handle my lightweight. He sent his boys. So stop thinking and giving the devil more credit than he deserves. He is not an equal opposite of the Lord. The devil is not an equal opposite of the Lord. So every time I go through a situation, if God is in control, I have to look at it through the eyes that God has me in his hands. Amen? So here is this. So pleasant or painful? Pleasant or painful? Why would I have a painful existence? Or why would I have pain in my life? Anytime, I want, I want any mothers in the house, any mothers in the house, raise your hand. I need y'all to help me preach this, this, this part of this sermon. When y'all gave birth, did you go through a little bit of pain? Well, sometimes we go through the pain we are, we have, because we're on the laboring table of destiny. And, and it's not to kill you, but there's something inside of you that has to be pushed out. And unless you travail a little bit and go through a little something, you will never pre... Oh, come on, somebody. Is there anybody that realizes that God ain't in this thing to kill you? He's in this thing to preserve you and to enlarge you and to bless you. Okay, all right. I knew I was going to get somebody excited on that one. So here it is. Because we live in a fallen world, Every time you ask the question, why am I going through this? Why am I going through that? Let me tell you why. Because you, you live in a fallen world. You, you, we go through the things we go through, not because God is mad at you, not because he don't like you, not because this is the lot that you have in life. It's because you live in a fallen world. And in this world, you're going to have some tribulations, but what? Be of good cheer, for, for God has already overcome the world. And so we have to understand and always look at what we go through, listen, through the sovereignty of God, through the sovereignty of God, and through the fact that you are not living in a utopia. You are living in a fallen world. And so we're going to have some struggles sometimes. And if you always dictate your love or God's love for you based off the struggle you go through, you will always have a jacked up perspective of who God is. Who I love this. I love this so much. God, God, this is, this is, there will always be times in your life when believers will experience what appears to be difficult to our flesh. But even in difficulty, we have to understand that God's eternal plan of love and purpose for our lives are unchangeable. The Bible says that the plans of God cannot be thwarted or they cannot be changed. As believers, we are challenged through faith to live through the midst of adversity with a different perspective than the world does. And so here's, here's my, 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 my subject for today is living with, uh, with a different perspective. Uh, a perspective shift. Tell your neighbor, say it's time to have a perspective shift. How you look at things. Go ahead and bring that first slide up for me that I, that I provided for you. Whenever we look at adversity, we have to look at it through the word of God and look at it through all the scriptures. This is only one, two, three, four, five, six. This is only six of them. But there are hundreds, if not thousands of scriptures in the Bible that discuss negativity and adversity. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 through 7 says in this you greatly rejoice though, though now for a little while if, if need be 
you have been grieved with what? Various trials. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, and, uh, gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is so plain. And so plain, it says that this is how, this is the mature believer. When you go through various trials, now, now the reason why it didn't, it didn't try to tell you one trial or another is because a lot of times we want to say, oh, he was talking about Pastor Greg's trial, or he was talking about Danny's trial, or he's talking about uh, uh, somebody else's trial, but no, he's talking about yours. There's nothing new under the sun. And stop, stop living in this lie that the devil tries to whisper in your ear and act, and act like you're the only one going through something. Huh? What you are going through, people have been through it before, and not only have they been through it, they won through it. How many of y'all play spades up in here? I love to play spades. And I pride myself. Me and my wife don't lose. I'm just letting y'all know. I'm letting y'all know. We don't lose. Don't know. No, I, I, I got proof. I got proof, baby. Listen to this. We, we don't lose. If we lose, it's very rare. Okay, very, very rare. Every, every 20 years, everyone. Okay. But one of the things I pride myself on on space is that, that I can pull a book that you can't pull. You look at a hand and you see three books. I look at it, I see five. Why? Because there's strategy. And that's knowing of the cards that allows you to play it in a certain way that, the, that your opponent thinks that you got something that you don't. And so you're able to slip a couple. I want you to know that when I play against the devil, I don't, I don't pretend, but I got something that's greater. I got something that trumps everything that he brings to the table. And it doesn't matter what you're going through you need to know you got a trump card in Jesus. You got the big joker. Uh, for those of you who don't play spades, y'all, y'all, okay. So here it is. Hallelujah. And you know what? I, I, I just got to run with that a little bit. You know, it's only two jokers in the, in the, in the book, the big joker and the little joker. But see, when you play in heavenly spades, you can play it one time and you get it back. You can play it again. As long as you believe you, your ability to use your trump card is not based off just one trump card. Your, your ability to use it is God asks you, let it be unto you according to your. God, I know I just used the trump card. Let me grab it again. Bam. Okay, Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this is the mentality that we should have, are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is about to be revealed in us. It didn't say for us, it said in us. Because until it's revealed in here, it never will be revealed out here. Okay, that was good. Y'all missed that. Go back, get the tape. Until you get it on the inside of you, until the word of God transforms your hope and your belief system on the inside, it will never transform your circumstances on the outside. What then, verse 31, shall we say of, of these things? This is the mentality. If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? Verse 37, knowing all things, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So here it is. Here it is. Paul concludes he said, listen, I don't care what you go through. What you're going through doesn't even compare to what's about to be revealed in you. And listen to this. You got to know in all of this stuff, you're more than a conqueror. God, that's so good. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 13. Now if anyone builds, builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, uh, each one works will become clear. For the day will, will declare it because it will be revealed by what? Fire. See, 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 listen. Most of us don't even want to go to, through the fire, but that's how the gold is purified. Huh? 
Huh? That's why we're breaking down because we won't allow ourselves to be submitted to the fire of God. Woo! So here it is. This is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except which is common to man. Tell your neighbor, I went through the same thing. Huh? Oh, no, you ain't never been in jail. Yeah, they have. Huh? You ain't never got pulled over by the cop and had to work. Yes, we have. Huh? You ain't never lost your job. Yes, she have. You ain't never been homeless. The devil is a liar. Slept in a garbage can. Come on now. Nothing you go through. And I'm tired. I'm tired of everybody. Listen, can I get on some married folks? Stop acting like your wife is so jacked up, can't nobody change her. Stop acting like your husband is so far gone. If, they cha if he changed me, he can show change your, oh, come on. Come on now. See, we get in our mind of our holiness and somebody else's sin. But nothing has seized you that which is common. If God can shape the whole world with a series of let that be and say, let that be light and light became, don't you think that God can call your husband and say, let him be a man of God and won't he become it? God, oh God. I, I know y'all didn't clap. You need to anyway. Okay. Woo! I'm on it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 17 says, so we do not lose heart. This again, this is the mentality of going through adversity. I don't get scared. I do not lose heart, though outwardly, our outward self is wasting away. I, can, I said this last week, you can be going through hell with gasoline draws on. Everything in your life can be dying, but he said, don't lose heart. This is the mentality we ought to have. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond comprehension. Here's the problem. Most of us are looking for an earthly way to glory, and God says that, that you don't lose heart, not by, by your circumstances on earth, but by your position in eternally, eternally with God. Okay, y'all didn't clap on that one either. That's all right. Verse 18, as we look not to the things that are seen, I don't base my joy, I don't base my, my, my perspective based on what's wrong in my life, what's going, what's, what's not uh, all in disarray. I don't base that on what you see because if I keep my perspective, what is seen is temporary. And if I keep my perspective, what is seen is temporary and what I know, listen to this, listen to this. Um, I, I, Pastor Vinny, I'm so glad you're here, man. I love you. I, I was talking to Pastor Vinny. Uh, we both have situations where mom, parents are going through some physical ailments in their lives. And you know what? I've been praying for my mom for the last 40 years. She has had has MS for the last 40 years of her life. And now my mom is crippled in, in a wheelchair. She cannot get out of the bed. She, I, we have to pick her up to put her on, on the toilet. And I'm not saying that to bring, to bring embarrassment in any way. But what I, am saying, what I am saying is this. For so long, I've prayed for other people. And other people have gotten healed. And now I go home and I pray for my mom. And my mom's body is decaying and, and rotting away. But here's what I don't do. I don't sacrifice what I know to be true about God on the altar of things I don't understand. Just, be, just because, just because... I have not seen the manifestation of the healing in my mama's physical body does not make God not a healer. He still heals. And we sometimes we got to get that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faith where, go, God, I know that our God is able, and we know that he will, but even if he don't, God, we still won't bow. We'll still come in here. We'll still raise our hands. We'll still say that you're worthy, God. Why? Because my, because my faith is not based in a physical condition. My faith is based in an eternal possession that I have. Oh, come on. Woo! God, 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which, you try, which is to, you, to try you. In other words, don't think it strange when you go through something. Y'all acting like this just started happening. As though some strange thing happened to you 
But how are we to react? Rejoice. To the extent that you partake in Christ's suffering. We, he says in this moment, Paul, Peter says in this moment, you ought to get excited because you're suffering. Uh, we didn't get no claps off that one. He said we ought to get excited because, listen, if you, we said this last week, if you suffer with Christ, you will reign with Christ. And we don't realize that many times it ain't that God wants you to take you on this long journey of suffering, but he wants to see if you're going to be faithful in the moment so that he can open a door that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad and exceeding joy. And so here we are, all of these passages about going through, all of these passages about going through, we, we need to reshape, we need to reshape how we look at adversity. We need to change our perspective. You know what? I, I'm, I got on these glasses. I take off these glasses. I can't see none of y'all. I just see a whole bunch of different colors right now. I know you, it's people out there because I had on my glasses. But listen to this. Not having on my glasses does not change what's out there, but it changes my perspective. And see, this is what's happening with many of us. As we look at, we, this, this is how I'm looking at you now, is when you're looking at life through a demonic perspective. It doesn't look like what you think it's supposed to be. But it's not until we put on the word of God that where lines were blurred before, now there's distinctions. The Bible says that the word of God separates even from the bone into the marrow. It gives you direction. His, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So when I start looking at, when I start, now listen to this. Here's the problem. Many of us put on our word, but we don't trust what we see. We don't trust what we see. And God's saying, put the word on, trust what I see, and keep walking. Ooh, golly. Ooh, we got to live by a different perspective. So the world's perspective is, uh, the world has this perspective of who is against you. Believers have a perspective of who is for them. Mm. The world lives by the perspective of who is attacking me and the pain of temporary conditions. Believers are called to live by the revelation of God's eternal love and reward that is released through the death, the burial, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So whenever I get this right perspective, whenever I get this right perspective of what I'm going through, I'm able to be like Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 and 16 where he has the testimony that though I'm wasting away on the outside, my spirit man is being renewed day by day. Huh? Because I, I don't let outside conditions dictate how I view God. Hallelujah. 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 Can I throw myself out there? Because I know he probably, I know it's we three hours ahead, so I know pastor is looking. Huh. Last week I preached a sermon and I thought, I thought, I, I was like, man, God, I'm on this one. And I and I start, I'm gonna let you know I got puffed up in a little pride a little bit. And I walked out of here and everybody was telling me, man, that's a great message. That's a great message, great message. I was like, ooh. And I was looking, listen to this, I was looking for Pastor Warren to call. And I got a conversation with him, but he didn't say nothing about the sermon. And I was like, dang, I wonder if I didn't do so good. And I wonder if, if, if I was acting like many of us do. Because when we're walking by the word, if we don't get this great affirmation from somebody or things don't change, things don't change right away, then we wonder and we go back and we be crying and talking about, well, God, I know I stayed before your face. Why am I going through? 
And the reality is, listen to this, my, that, that's a pastor I used to have, that, uh, Pastor Kirby John used to say, truth is not afraid of inquiry. When you're walking in integrity and you're walking in the word of God and it's already giving you a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway, you don't need the next man to confirm whether or not you're walking in. Huh? And that's no knock on our pastor because I still want him to call and say, well done. But what I, am, what I am saying is this. We have to get to the place where we keep the perspective that's based in the word of God regardless of whether or we have somebody next to us patting us on the back or not. Huh? Hallelujah. Oh, this is so good right here. Listen to this. So here it is. Let, I'm going I'm to give, give you this. This is going to be so good. Go to, go to uh, John chapter, did, did I give you John chapter 16? Okay, I'm just going to read this. John chapter 16, verse 33. You write it down. Go ahead and put that slide up for me. John chapter, chapter 16, verse 33. It says, I have, I have said these things to you that you know uh, that you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. How, how many of you have ever heard that before? This morning, I saw that. I woke up. I've read that scripture at least a hundred times. And I woke up and it said something to me different this morning. Put it up. Look at this. Whenever we talk about the word world, it is the word cosmos. In this world, you're going to have tribulation, right? In this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I will overcome the world. Now, listen to this. To this morning, when I looked up the word cosmos, it means physical unit of world, physical world. It means the environment in which we live, but you know what it also means? It means a perspective and a mentality that's based in worldly thinking. So he says in, in, math, in, this, in this passage in John 16, he says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. Let, let me give you, let me, I, I, some, some of y'all going to get this in a minute. But if you choose to have a worldly perspective, don't trip when trouble comes. He said, what Jesus does here is he gives you, he gives you a picture of cosmos thinking versus kingdom thinking. He says, when you have cosmos thinking, where you're always looking defeated, where you're stressed out, constantly fighting to get victory, when you're looking at everything as an obstacle, when every, all your joy is determined by temporal conditions, when you, look, when you look at things through the lens of who is against you, when you start looking at all that and you're all negative, you can rest assured you're going to have some problems. He says, but I have overcome the world. So now he's giving you contrast. He's saying in this cosmos system, you can expect to have trouble. But if you understand that I've already overcome the world, if you understand you are already victorious and you have a victorious perspective, if you already know that you are blessed, not because, not because of what you got, but by God, who you got, come on now. If you already understand that and look at life, through the, op, through the eyes or the lens of opportunity rather than obstacle, if you always understand that the joy is determined by my position in Christ and not the, oh, come on. When you understand whose you are and, and that looks at life through the lens of who is, eternal, who is eternally for you instead of against you, he says at that point you overcome the world. So he challenges us to see the difference between cosmos thinking and kingdom thinking. How do you perceive, uh, the Bible says, when in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord, what? High and lifted up. When you're going through and things are dying in your life, do you see God high and lifted up? How do you see him? How do you perceive what's going on? You lose your job. How do you perceive that? Huh? You get laid off. How do you perceive that? You did get a diagnosis. How do you perceive that? 
Somebody walks out on you. How do you perceive that? Good riddance. See you later. Okay. All right. So, so listen to this. Now, I'm not saying when you have a kingdom thinking that you're not going to have some struggle. But listen to this. The difference, oh, can you bring it back up? The difference is you are assured trouble all the time. Kingdom thinking says, when I have trouble, I got the solution to the trouble. Oh, I got six minutes to get through with this one. So, so here we go. Go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3 right quick. Ephesians chapter 3 right quick. Last week we talked about uh, Daniel and I mean, David and, uh, excuse me, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in, in the fiery furnace. And in Daniel chapter, I mean, excuse me, in Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 14, it says, for this reason I bow my knee. We've already read that, so I don't want to waste. We've read that, but I want you to read down through verse 20. I want, to, I, want, I want to get you down to verse 17. Go to verse 17 for me. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. This is the purpose of everything we go through, to root you and ground you in love that my mentality and the lens in which I look at life is always rooted in the fact that God loves me. It's always rooted in the fact that God loves me. So, so point number one that I want to give you very quickly is divine perspective. Listen to this. Divine perspective is, is motivated by Christ and not by comfort. In Daniel, in Daniel chapter 3, I'm going to get back to the scripture in a minute in Ephesians. But in Daniel chapter 3, I want you to know something. In the beginning of Daniel chapter 3, don't start playing yet. Give me give one more second. Uh, in Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, and Daniel, they deal with this moment where they have to, when they have to um, uh, determine whether or not they're going to submit to the king's food. And they, that's where we get Daniel fast from, right? At the moment they, they, they don't submit to his food, God gives them strength that's greater than everybody else. Then they go from there and they have to interpret a dream that nobody else can interpret. And from that moment when they're able to interpret it, now they become governors or, or over, over provinces is, provinces and all that type of provinces. Is. They become over rulers over certain areas in, in, in the land. At that moment, now they don't bow to a statue and now they are going from now being blessed by, by, the, by king, now they are under attack, and now they are being thrown into the fiery furnace. So they go from one blessing to an attack, from one blessing to an attack, from another blessing to an attack. And so this is why you cannot be, you cannot be committed to the comfort. Because at the moment you are committed to the comfort, Compromise will automatically come. Because at the level you become committed to the comfort more than the comforter. At that point, compromise will come in because you will, you will long for the comfort rather than long for obedience. Number two, divine perspective is developed through relationships. This is where we get, get this, this particular passage in, in Ephesians. In Ephesians chap, chapter 3, it says in verse 17, so that, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through, through faith that you may be rooted in love, or grounded in love, and may strength, uh, uh, have strength to comprehend with all the saints. Say, with all the saints. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had strength because they were strength in numbers. Sometimes a lot of you are not walking, a lot of us are not walking in the strength that we have because we don't want to isolate ourselves. And we don't realize that we will never understand the tr and truly be rooted in love until I can connect with you and you connect with me. And then you can hold me accountable when I start having a thinking, a perspective that's not lined up with the word of God. Then you can come and check me, right? And then you can bring me back and then I can check you. And until we develop these relationships, a threefold cord is not easily broken. Until you realize that you're stronger together than you are apart. Number three, and lastly, you start playing now. 
divine perspective releases abundance, abundant existence. Listen to this. I want, I want to read this to you. So verse 18. Go to verse 18 for me in that same scripture. May the strength to comprehend with all the saints that the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 20. Verse 20 is so powerful. Verse 20 says, Now, what is the word now? What does that mean? Now, that's what it means. Now means now. The reality is now is the only word that describes time. Because you cannot pick, take a picture of time. Because at the moment you take a picture of time, by time it develops, it's not that time anymore. So that's why now faith only works in the now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that not seen. So, so when he says now in this very moment, he says after you get a revelation of God's love and you're rooted and grounded, you get a different perspective of why you're going through. He says now I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask, hope, or imagine. See, most of us often quote, quote that scripture, but we haven't shifted our perspective yet. There's a now in front of us that says, I have to line myself up with, with what you're saying, God. I have to believe you in the face of everything that tells me I should. I have to trust you when things don't look the way I want them to look. God, Abraham, viewing that his body was as good as dead, believed God and so became exactly what God said. When, you, when everything is dead in your life, can you stand up and trust him? So I'm trying, thank you for standing up, I didn't even ask you, but thank you. So we are shifting our perspective we're shifting our perspective. Your diagnosis is not a death sentence. What you're going through is not going to kill you. You are strong enough to handle any situation God brings you to. He said he gave you strength to bear up under the thing that he put on you. In fact, when God brought on, allowed on you what you are dealing with, he was actually bragging on you. He was saying, I can trust Jacob with this one. I've seen him be faithful over a few things. Take, hey, take this, Jacob. But with every level of devil is a new level of blessing. So, Father, shift our perspective to trust you in the midst of it and to know that even as we go through, you're a God that's shifting us into this new destiny and these new walk. As we trust you, we declare our now abundance over our life. We claim it to be so. In Jesus' name. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that on-time word. Amen. Please feel free to um, have your seats. Um, such an on-time word about how we see things, how we see things and changing our perspective, having a divine perspective. If you have struggled with perspective or if you would like prayer for anything else, um, to the doors to my right, there are prayer partners there waiting to pray with you. So you can feel free to exit to the right if you need somebody to touch, agree, and pray with you on what you are believing God for. We are just, again, so excited to have you uh, with us today. Uh, remember that we still have the Love Wins Conference coming up. We want to make sure, I'm not sure if we've sold out yet. Um, 
pastor posted on Facebook that we still had two spots available, and then Saturday is totally open. So please make sure that you go to the Get Rap app and sign up for our Love Wins Conference. Now we're going to pray over our offering and pray out service. So in front of your uh, seats in the seat back, there are offering envelopes. Um, please prepare your tithes and your offerings now as we pray out. We just thank you, Lord God, for this day, Father. We thank you, Father, for this on-time word, Father, of divine perspectives, Lord God. Shift our perspective, Lord God, so that we focus on you, Father, so that we live out your word, Lord God, so that we trust you, God. No more cosmos thinking, Father, only kingdom thinking, Lord God. Bless this offering, God. Bless the hands that are giving today, Father. Thank you for this opportunity, God, to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with. Thank you, Father, that we are faithful stewards of all that you have given us, Father, because it's all yours anyway, God. So just receive this offering as we cheerfully give into this your body. Have your way. Let us have a blessed week until you bring us back at your appointed time. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. You are dismissed. Have an awesome week.